New Shelf. I'm going to upgrade my propagation station and I'm switching it over to this. Just, it's a wire shelf but with sturdier supports. Much better than what I have right now. It's 1.9 meters square with a face and it's 540 millimeters deep. The one that I, I have right now is I think 600 millimeters deep so it's uh, a bit deeper but the difference is the shelf on this one is level there's no protrusions at the edges unlike this one which I currently have you look at the edges there's this So I can't have my containers go over, they would just get stuck. So at least with this one, I can have them overhanging, which means I can fit more trays and containers in it. Is this an unboxing video? Nah, I'll get right to the build and show you the finished product. All done looks more sturdy than the previous one I just need to cover the top because otherwise uh, caterpillars from this tree would be falling down during spring and summer so I need to protect them I have some shade cloth laying around maybe I can use this and just tie them in the post and hopefully this will shelter shelter the whole rack from the caterpillars from the trees all done I can fit 10 trays per level and there are four yeah there are four shelves so I can have a total of 40 40 trays so it looks like I should get all of those trays now now that I'm done with the rack, I can get back to repotting the plants that I have. There's a bunch here that I pulled from the ground. And they're going to pots now. Time check, 6 p.m. And I'm still at it. There's still a lot of plants to go. And I'm still repotting most of them. I think I'll be spending another good hour just putting things in pots. It's fun though. It is now dark outside. And I managed to sneak in two more trays. So it's about time I fill up my new station. Looks like I still have space for a lot more trays. I spent most of the afternoon potting up the small the small plants. So I've got a lot of Victor Canes, Superbum, this is a uh, Sedeveria Mayalin, Echeveria Prolifica, more Superbum, Pearl von Nunberg, and Purple Pearl. These two are the Purple Pearl, these are the Pearl von Nunberg. This is Sidum Padipit, I think. That's uh, Paraguayense. More Douglas Huth. This is another PVN. A Victor Kane. Crassula Tam Thumb. This is the Echeveria Meritu, which used to be in the center of the bowl. A 
bunch of aeoniums, some jelly beans, more Douglas Hoth, more Crashulas, and on the other side, a lot of beheaded plants. So it looks like this spring would be busy. This spot gets morning sun, morning and afternoon sun, but at an angle, it's a good spot to place this rack. So I need to clear this area so I can transfer the rack over here. We have moved the rack into the edge of the alfresco where it is more sunny. So this is good for the larger seedlings and cuttings. So I was cleaning up this part of the garden and I noticed something weird. I wonder if you can see it too. There's some growth here. This is a Sidum Cape Blanco or the Silver Blob. And it's a funny story how it ended up there because when I was working on this before, this was a, another landscape. I planted a bunch of uh, Cape Blancos around in a semicircle, in an arc. The thing is, it was somewhere, no, it was spring and it was going summer and they all dried out and died, or at least I thought they did. I managed to salvage only one clump, which I transferred over here. That's all that's left. And apparently, it's not the only one that's left here because uh, last autumn I filled this whole area with uh, an, a new layer of soil. I didn't bother removing all of the dead or at least what I thought was dead dead sedums. So I left them there and you know just one day they started popping up here. I wonder if there are others. I might have to look around later, but this is pretty cool. I'm thinking of removing everything here, so all of those plants here. So I want to uh, revise, revise the layout. Maybe do a multiple tier, multiple tier of bowls. So get a large bowl, a medium bowl, and a small bowl, and just stack them on top of each other. So somewhere in the center. Well, I, I already found uh, someone who's selling the bowls that I, I like, but I might not have the budget yet. So until then, maybe I should just prepare this area. Part of the job requires pulling up everything and uh, storing all of the pebbles somewhere. But I haven't thought yet where to move this, guys. Although I do have a lot, uh, I do have several pots ready. I definitely ne need to move this guy out. This is the Culebra. The others seem happy, although there had been some uh, massive fung fungus attacks last winter. I might as well remove them for now. Place them in individual pots and I better do it before uh, summer, summer arrives. That way, they would be established by then, because otherwise, they would just die from the heat. It's pretty nice to see that a lot of them have pops. So, take this uh, powder blue, for example. There's a few here, and definitely a lot more on, the, on this side. So, I, I might have to separate them soon. This powder puff, also known as Exotica, it has a few pups underneath. I'm not sure if this Blue Waves has some. Let's have a look at the rest. Uh, 
I remember seeing pops on this golden glow, but I'm not sure. Maybe I was mistaken. But yeah, I will be pulling them up soon. First to go would be this two. This is a Lila China. And this is a blue metal. So they're quite small and they would nicely fit inside the, the one dollar clay pots that I bought. So that's what I'm going to do now. Usually when dealing with small rosettes like these what I would do when I want to uproot them is to clear the soil around. So in this case there's top dressing. So I'm going to clear the pebbles around it. This is mainly so I have a better uh, better grip when I pull it later on because there's nothing blocking my my way right so I remove the larger pebbles around maybe just shift some of the smaller ones out and I try to go as low as I can and I would test if the soil is sufficiently soft because it has been raining a few days ago it looks like there's little resistance but there i just had to lightly tug and slowly increase the pressure that's how i usually pull up plants because i don't want to damage too too much of the roots although i tend to trim some of the roots when they're too long or too thick in this case the root ball is perfect so I'll keep it as is and I'm going to do the same to this blue metal because I want to move this to a different pot the so first step is to clear the stones around it all right so no more pebbles This gives me the clearance to put my fingers, to wrap my fingers around the base. Let's see if it's sufficiently loose and soft. There's a bit of resistance, but not, not more than the Lila China. So slowly twist if you have to. Don't force it. And there. The roots are quite longer, but... I think they're still okay. I don't have to trim them. So this is my technique for removing uprooting plants from the soil. I just get, you know, I just clear enough space for my fingers to go around and I hold them from below the base of the rosette. That way I don't damage any of the leaves and I don't add any scuff marks on the upper leaves. I keep mentioning my one dollar pots but I have never shown you them. So this here, they are all 17 centimeters in diameter and these are one dollar each at Bunnings, Bunnings Warehouse. So these usually uh, go really fast so as soon as uh, I, found, I find out that there are some, I just go grab a bunch. Uh, the last trip I had, I bought 50. And it looks like I already used one third of them because there used to be three more stacks here. That's how fast they go. So here's where some of them went. There's more here. There's even more over here. So I'll show you my process of uh, how I put up rosettes like these. One of the first things I would do is to remove all of the dead leaves, dried leaves, the bottom. Because otherwise, you know, without, without the leaves, oh, I mean if the leaves are still there, they reduce the airflow and it makes the, the area underneath more humid, which means it's more prone to rotting. So I just make sure to go under there and remove whatever I can 
So I'm satisfied. It's clear and clean enough under. And all right. I have my soil mix here. And my plant is over here. So I just put the, the pot right next to the wheelbarrow to make it easier. What I usually do is to see how far it is from the base, from the bottom. So there's quite some space. So I'm going to fill that up first. You might notice that I'm not putting any uh, large pebbles at the bottom. There's no need. I'm not worried about the soil uh, escaping. The main reason is when the soil is wet anyway, they form, uh, they tend to clump, they hold each other. So the water won't, uh, the soil won't really escape or fall off through the hole. And I'm happy enough with this. Although, you know, the roots, the root ball is not sitting directly on the soil, but I'm holding it this way. The, the lowest of the roots are barely touching the soil. So what I do is, with one hand, I hold it this way. And with my other hand, I just scoop some soil and spill them around, around each side, wherever I can. I do not try to force the the soil and just let them fall and remain loose I don't need them to be compact otherwise um, it would be harder for drainage so the, the soil needs to be really really loose but unfortunately I only have two hands and one of my hand my free hand supposedly is holding the, the my phone my camera so I'll have to pause for a while and do it so I've already added enough soil to hold uh, to hold the rosette upright and this way I could show you how I do the rest of the area and if you'll notice I have two types of spades the first one is deeper than the other one this is more flat and this is deep they each serve different purposes the deep one is for me just to scoop a lot more soil. It's, it's easier to balance them. So that's what I use to fill up the base. But the flatter one is what I need to, to get to those hard to reach areas. So what I would do is get as flat as I can and there. And I just reach and pour like so. Sometimes uh, some areas are harder to reach, so what I would do is add more soil into a spot that's easy to reach Then, using any tool, I usually use my fingers and just move the soil around. So that's how I plant in pots. There. So in case you were wondering why I was shaking the, the rosette, it's just mainly to shake off any of the dirt that I see on top of the leaves. I'm aware that other people use you know fine brushes, but I'm lazy. It's much much easier this way. There. I'm happy with how with how it turned out. Alright, so I figure out how to hold my phone in place. It's funny because it involves Zach's toy. 
anyway, I'll be showing you some of my techniques and me actually potting up one of my plants. In this case, it's this blue metal. So as I mentioned, the first thing I do is to remove all of the detritus, the dead leaves. I see a few here. This one. There's still some more here. So I only remove the ones that easily break off or detach. I don't force the others. I don't have to do that. And all right. So the the root ball, the roots are quite long. And I'm going to hold it from below like so. It's like holding a champagne bottle. I mean a champagne glass. Hold it like so. And while it is suspended, start putting some soil around. So I'm using this one so I can get around where I need. I keep adding and adding soil and until the roots are secured by the soil just by the mere pressure so far it's already supported and all I need to do is to raise it some more just pull it up a bit this means that the, the, the roots are not uh, are not compressed So this part is getting tight so what I'll do is to add more soil here and just push them towards the other side so in this case I'm pushing them now so I have uh, a lack of soil in this side now I'll just use my spade to fill it up so what I would usually do is to to shield some of the leaves there we go the blue metal is in the pot just in case you were wondering, I was using this toy as a makeshift stand because I couldn't find my phone stand.